slipped away into the next room. Everything remains as it was. The old life we live so fondly together is untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, that is still. I will call you by your old familiar name, speak of you in the easy way in which I always used. Put no sorrow in my tone. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes that we enjoyed together. Pray, play, smile, and I will think of you, pray for you. Let your name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effort. Life means all that it ever meant. It's the same as it ever was. There is unbroken continuity. Why should you be out of mind because you're out of sight? You are, but waiting for me for an interval, somewhere very near just around the corner. Nothing is hurt, nothing is lost. One brief moment and all will be as it was before. How we shall laugh at the trouble of parting when we meet again. That's an Irish prayer. There's another thing that I like to. Grieve not, nor speak to me with tears, but laugh and talk of me as if I were beside you. I loved you so. It was heaven here with you. So, uh, the Murphy family thanks all of you who came to the celebration of our wife, mother, grandmother, great grandmother, and friend. You're a diverse group family, artist friends, old childhood friends, neighbors, and others. Jean was many things, all of them good, and all of them well done. She was loving, generous with her time and money great wife, wonderful mother, a good Catholic woman, a mentor to many, quick to volunteer for the tough jobs, and not afraid to straighten out her often untamed husband. I, I never heard her complain about her life. She loved children, and we had a Passover. She loved art and doing art even more. From when I met her in our early 20s to her death, she was an earnest autodidact artist, learning through books and mentors films or classes, how to do oil painting or sculpture or printmaking or whatever. Although we were not wealthy, we and the family took wonderful vacations to Europe and many other great places. When the kids were grown, she was able to go to the Art Students League on 57th Street, Manhattan, which was her long-term dream. We would rent a sublet apartment for a month or two where she would go to classes with, the, with renowned artist teachers. I would go down on weekends and go to Broadway shows or the opera, or would go to great New York restaurants. She was very proud of her children and bragged constantly over them. I think her life was a good one. I'm, I'm a fortunate man, and I've spent 58 years as her husband. Now I'm going to sing a song, and they try to stop me because the noise pollution, the noise pollution, the police, police are going to come and get me. <laughs> My father used to sing this song, it's an Irish song, of course, and, and everybody knows it, my family, and Sleeve Le Mans, and, uh, and I tried to sing it and nowhere near as he did, but uh, I'm going to try it. Alone, all alone, by the way was strand, all alone in a crowded hall. The hall is gay and the waves they are grand, but my heart is not here at all. It lies far away by night and by day to the times and the joys that are gone. But 
I never will forget that sweet maiden that I met in the valley near Sleelamon. Oh, it was not the grace of her queenly hair, nor her cheeks of roses glow, nor her soft black eyes, nor her flowing hair, nor was it her lily white brow. Twas the soul of truth and a belting rule and a smile like a summer's dawn. And she stole my heart away one soft summer's day in the valley near Sweet Namon. She loved that song so much. <laughs>